Spending too much money. This past weekend, I had the pleasure of going to Classic Game Fest in Austin, Texas. Viewers of this channel or of any of my social medias might know that I spend a lot of money on old video games, and what better place to do it than at a retro gaming convention? As a small disclaimer and also a thank you to the organizers of this event, I happened to get a free VIP weekend pass as I'd be filming for this channel, you know, just like the other conventions that I film and also have a playlist about. Thank you, David. Day one. And technically the only day that I went. My girlfriend and I took about a three hour drive to spend one special day hunting for old video games. We arrived at the festival about 20 minutes after the doors opened and still waited in a 15 minute line that trailed outside into the parking garage and you best believe that this Texas heat was not playing around. After getting our wristbands and walking in, I realized that this convention was not going to be like the others we've been to. They do claim this event to be the largest retro game convention in Texas after all. Originally, I had a list of games and items that I wanted to get. I tried to widen my selection from consoles like the SNES to the Wii to items such as controllers and plushies, but uh, I kind of forgot the list in the car and I definitely did not want to walk back outside in 100 degree weather. And on top of that, this convention was very, very packed. Allow me to elaborate. At the last convention I went to, I was able to pull out my list casually and see what I wanted. But since I wanted to get as much footage as possible this time around, it kind of made it a little bit more difficult to stop and stare at any booth. I will say though, the amount of space that this event had was insane. There were small sections to play games, a little museum area, people playing music, tournaments being held in the back, and an arcade cabinet section as well. Of course, there were vendors of all sorts, some being small and some being huge. No two vendors were the same either. Each vendor literally sold a number of things from plushies to figures to art to jewelry to clothing and of course video games. It was a lot to take in for my first time. And a little note from editor Nick as I type up this script. I've been watching others point of views on this convention and the traffic seemed to really die down towards the end of the day so I definitely think that there could be some pros and cons going early or later. Some pros I would say is that I managed to find some really good deals at this convention as going early there were still a lot of things to search through and find. Although I forgot my list in the car, I did remember a few games on it, one of them being A Boy and His Blob. Whenever I buy games for my collection, I usually try to get games I know I'd be down to play on my own or on my shameless plug, but you know, twitch.tv slash nixlevel, I play everything there, go check it out. A Boy and His Blob acquired. Recently I've been really into playing Pikmin, trying to play them each in order as Pikmin 4 just came out, and so coming to this event, I wanted to find a Pikmin plush. Right, we're gonna see if we can find a Pikmin plush. Pikmin plush. Like yeah, this is a lot of Pokemon. I don't think I'm gonna find Pikmin. Pikmin plush. Pikmin plush. Pikmin plush. Yeah, this is all Pokemon. But unfortunately, <laughs> uh, I had no luck. But I saw these really cool custom handmade Pikmin pots. I ran into a recent vendor friend that I've made as I met him at the last convention I attended. We did a little coin flip and then ended up following him on TikTok, Zach with Cultured Gaming. Hey, what's, what's up, bro? How are you? How you been, friend? I'm good, man. Good. I was you. Mans was stacked with 3DS games, but I wasn't ready to start dropping some cash yet. So we'll get back to him and part two of our coin flipping schemes. There's an odd feeling I get whenever I see games going for such high prices, knowing that I probably won't ever drop a large sum of money on behind glass cases. I've dropped some big bucks before, but I think the thought behind it sitting on my shelf and me being proud of the purchase or just having it as a flex is something I truly ponder upon now as a collector. But never mind that, I found some lower ranked 3DS games I needed for my collection. Bratz, Cars 2, WWE All-Stars, and Bust a Move Universe acquired. Going through some more shelves of games, I had this weird voice call out to me, and it wasn't that so Raven either. I think because I was trying to stay conservative to my list, this odd voice told me that I shouldn't constrain myself to it and just started picking games from a 3DS shelf. I'm telling you, I was doing mental math as fast as possible, trying to get games I needed or have never seen out in the wild. And one thing I actually had my eye out for was this Mega Man Legacy Collector's Edition. Seriously, I've been searching for one of these guys for like two years now and I was finally able to find it for a pretty good price. This booth alone was the majority of my pickups. I spent a little bit, but Mega Man Collector's Edition, Monster Hunter Stories, RPG Maker Fez, and Gravity Falls Gnome Gauntlet acquired. I think one of the coolest parts about these conventions is the type of people that you see here. 
For instance, the NBA Jam guy, Mr. Boom Shakalaka himself, Tim Kitzro, was here signing pictures and just being an amazing voice at his own booth. He's on fire? He's on fire! Yeah! Another instance was me running into popular Twitch streamer S-Fan TV. Can I get a, up, can I get a picture, bro? Yeah, sure thing. Hell yeah, man. Appreciate it, big dog. Yeah, of course. Yeah, have a good one. I'm always a little nervous meeting these guys in real life, but trust me, once I get bigger, <laughs> I won't be such a hermit. As my day was coming to its five-hour time limit mark, I still wanted to do some last minute checks in areas that weren't as populated as before. Back to Zachary from Cultured Gaming. I went back to the homie Zach to see what 3DS games I could bundle with some Wii U games for a friend, and I'm pretty sure at this point, we're coin flipping every time we come in contact. <laughs> and uh, let's just say, we're even now. <laughs> Besides when I knocked over his big box copy of Earthbound 2. <sighs> Ooh, hey, I'm kinda sorry about that bro. But it's okay, because next time we meet, we're coin flipping again. And although I might not win it, it's the fun behind it that makes it worth it in the end. You know, when you come to these conventions, you meet so many great people that can talk your ear off about the love of a certain game, and then you meet some people that just don't want to talk at all. What is this? <laughs> this is what I, I was walking by and I saw and I was like, hey, this looks kind of cool. Or something. Did I say something wrong or what? What? The because hell? I was only visiting Austin for the day, I wasn't really able to stick around as much as I would have liked. It kind of saddens me looking back at this footage because there's always so much cool stuff to see at video game conventions, and the hype and anticipation leading up to these events is so thrilling. I always have such a great time going to these events with my girlfriend, and scrubbing through convention footage always makes me want to go back to these days. If you're ever in Texas and love retro gaming, I would absolutely recommend taking the drive out to Austin, Texas for Classic Game Fest and that's because I didn't even get to meet voice actors or go to any of the conference rooms. Classic Game Fest is an amazing place to be and here's a small little outro for me at the end of the day. Hmm, other than that though, I spent a little bit of money, mainly on 3DS games, but that's okay. Overall, pretty well experienced. I would most likely come again. David, thank you so much for the press pass for the weekend. I definitely appreciate it and I would love to come back next year. Love you guys.